Alright, uh, okay, so uh, you were asking, let me just find the question again. Did I lose it? Where'd it go? Oh, uh, so, yeah, the question was, Med, how do I stop being a pussy? I never applied for a job anywhere since I think I'm bad, but when I wonder why the hell I'm not working yet, kill me, self-doubt, into self-doubt. Interesting, and I'm, I'm actually have your... Uh, I think he's gonna have had the same topic in the Medcast, so that's fine. Yeah, uh, and you're Conmart, Constantine Merrick. Okay, yeah, I have your stuff open. Yeah, I mean, like, it looks like you got a, a pretty good skill set portfolio. Um, yeah, I think what, it's quite lacking right now. But... What's your, uh, huh? All right, well, I got a couple questions for you. Um, yeah. Let's see, what, what, are your, what are your goals? Like, what do you want to do specifically? I mean, it's pretty much environment art, so... And what would be your dream scenario, like a, a specific company? Yeah, Naughty Dog, I think, since mm. that's quite like my only influences, right? Okay. Even Zana and Nick Gindro, people like that. Yeah, yeah Nick Gindro, he's, he's a great dude. Um, when, I, when I was teaching last term at Brainstorm, he was in the other classroom across from me, um, teaching the class, so... Yeah, cool stuff. Um, let's see... Uh, and uh, destiny inspired sketch, cool. Yeah, I mean, you have a. You, it looks like you you can make stuff, right? Um, and what what's keeping you from applying? You said you're you're just kind of in this endless catch twenty two loop cycle of like with self doubt. Yeah, like one day I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's not too bad. Then the second day I'm like, holy shit, this is garbage. <laughs> sure. Um. Um, and the thing is, like, if you if you go on this journey of like making this kind of portfolio um, for like a specific company, uh, you end up having a really strong portfolio if you try really hard. And it's not just you know applicable to one company; other companies see it too, and the possibility is open. So, so usually what I say, because I was just having this conversation with someone else a couple of days ago um, in person, because they were also. In, in the similar position where like you're you've got work uh, as in you have a portfolio and you have the skill set but the question is why am I not working and so I think what I would say for you and anyone else who might have uh, a similar circumstance is that you know you have a goal and that's let's say it's Naughty Dog or Six More Vodka or uh, you know Ubisoft whatever um, what I would do is set aside um, the next four to six weeks, maybe even six to eight weeks of, uh, of like a specific plan, right? Because I look at your stuff, I'm like, okay, yeah, you can, you can draw, you can paint, you got some rendering stuff, you, you have the passion, obviously, and you're creative. Um, what I would do is, is come up with a very, very specific uh, portfolio that that you would do as if you're already working there. Like, pick a game that they have or uh, an IP that you can envision for them and write it out. You'll have to like do some writing and planning and saying, okay, well, um, I can imagine Last of Us 4, right? What would that look like? Or Uncharted 7, right? Like, think, you know, a little bit ahead of time and come up with a, a little story and then, you know, give yourself time to do some research, collect some images, probably watch some documentaries on a, a location maybe you pick a location and say well we already saw last of us from the perspective of um you know uh, the united states what is it like in europe or or asia something right and so it's ideas like that that can help push your your portfolio uh and motivate you to keep going because if it's just okay uh i'll just do another rendering of nathan drake from uncharted uh that doesn't really get anywhere because as a concept artist it's not solving any problems yeah exactly and, and so as a concept artist what they're looking for is literally that a concept um and if they see that you can render, that's one thing. But if they see that you can render and bring awesome, fun, new ideas that are useful to the company, then that that shows that you're very valuable to them, right? Um, and so you have to sort of 
take a step back and rewind back to when you were a kid, when you had a wild imagination of like, oh, it could be this or it could be that. And then you bounce these ideas with some friends and they get excited and you get excited and then you set aside time, set aside time to do it. And then uh, you make a, 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 a six week uh, pro- a project where you start off with like, okay, these two weeks is research and sketches, very loose, very dumb, horrible sketches, just ideas. You know, like uh, a lot of times when you start out, you put yourself under a lot of pressure of saying, okay, my first drawing has to be amazing. It has to be Kim Jong-gi status. I have to render it like Craig Mullins. And if I don't, then I'm garbage, right? Uh, Forget all that. Throw that out the window. And instead say, okay, obviously the first two weeks of of sketching and ideation is not going to be the best. The best happens when you have something in front of you and then you start making decisions and making uh, creative decisions saying, okay, I want, you know, I want to go with this. This stuff sucks. I'm going to throw that out. But this one, there's something, something nice about this sketch. Let's go with that. And then uh, you start building off of ideas. Then you, then you take a break, maybe go to bed. The next day you come back with a fresh mind and you're like, oh, Oh, I never looked at it from this angle. And then that's what that's the creative process of coming up with new ideas and bringing that to the table. And so, uh, you know, like the first two weeks of sketches and ideas, uh, then weeks three and four is like executing on uh, what could be. And the thing is, uh, let's say you write it out and you plan it out ahead of time, the week, you know, week one. That's... Um, that it doesn't mean that what you write has to be the final because the final always in every single project completely changes and it's always unexpected and that's the beautiful part about it because uh you know you have a a result that's just completely new to you and new to the viewer and and that's what a creative person does it's not a creative person doesn't look at what's already there and just paint that no 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 you have to you know, go through the process and trust the muse, if you will, which means like, um, you know, the same feeling you have when you look up in the sky and you look at clouds and you say, oh, that looks like a turtle. Oh, that one looks like a castle. It's kind of that kind of thinking, but a little bit more complex and advanced. And so for you, it's like uh, you're in a position where, okay, you know, I'm scrolling on your Instagram. You can draw faces, you can render, you can uh, draw tanks. It, it, it looks like it's... Um, you know, the same kind of stuff that John Park and, and uh, Nick yeah. Jundro, the, these people that are, that, that are doing this kind of stuff and there's some like Ross Tran influence here and there. Um, so you've, you've passed the, the hump or, or let's say like the, the milestone of, hey, I can do that too. Um, now, now it's about what, what voice can you bring to the table, you know? And so, uh, I guess it, it's my uh, inclination to try and say that that's up to you to figure out. And and also that we're the rest of the world, we're excited to see what you do kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so like by the time you get six to eight weeks in, you've got, you know, work that has some kind of process that you can point to and say, look, I started with this. It was crappy. I know. But look at two weeks later. I came up with this idea. Oh, then I got this idea from watching this documentary. Oh, then I saw, then I played the game, and and then it reminded me of this one thing. And look, I can bring this to the table. And so uh, that's kind of um, that's kind of like what I would say. And then you know, at the end, you have a portfolio, and you, you put that online. And usually, um, if it's really good, other people resonate with it and say, "Oh my God." I want to play this game. I want to go to that place. That environment looks like it's so fun. And it's obvious that the artist did some research. They put the specific props there. The story, it's about all the details that make you an incredible concept artist. And so another thing I can say uh, about environments is like, uh, and, you know, there's there's different camps of environments. There's interiors, which, you know, you're doing like... uh, obviously interiors Um, then there's the natural stuff so outside mountains uh, planets cloudscapes whatever Um, so one thing I've been wanting to talk about uh, on YouTube actually is that if you want to be an environment artist you know the when, when I look at your work I should get the same feeling I get when I'm watching planet earth 
like that wonder that like oh my god like what is this this is so majestic because the same lasso tool goddamn paintings that everyone's doing of mountains we've seen it like come on like give me something more right um and that's your job as a creative to also go outside of what's already there watch a couple uh documentaries some movies and um really you know jump in there like maybe there's some animals that make that place uh unique right um and and then uh so a bunch of unex unexpected things might happen and so you know maybe like you put it online and then uh someone on reddit says oh that's pretty cool then other people see it then they upvote it or whatever and kotaku's like yeah this would be cool last of us 17 or whatever um and uh, then Naughty Dog sees it, and then it, then you get a connection with them, and they're like, "Hey, uh, you, you know, um, we like what you're doing. Do you want to do an art test? Something like that, right?" So, and I can't promise that that will happen, but you have to put it out there in order for it to be a possibility. So, there's my response. Hmm. The thing with personal projects, at least for me, is that I have written stuff, right? Like I have an idea of what I could do. But the moment I like start doing the project, I think I'm not good enough. So I'm okay. gonna fail. Like that idea of I could do better. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I like I stop myself even before like starting the project, and then I go back to like doing some crappy course or sketch or just you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we talked about. Uh, you know the actual journey, like what it takes to do that. Um, what you're talking about now is like. Uh, Another another thing I can certainly try and help with, and that's uh, you know that's actually what you wrote about. So I, I don't know why I went on the tangent about the actual no, journey. No, it's Hopefully it was helpful. Um, yeah. Okay. So let me kind of envision this. You're at your desk. You have a, a bunch of cool ideas, and they could be you know valid, and it could work, right? And that's why you have the idea. You might even be excited about it. You pick up your Wacom pen or your pencil, and you start it, and immediately almost instantaneously the self-doubt just sinks in this isn't gonna be good enough no no this won't be as cool as, as uh, what's actually there they're gonna look at it and say yeah this is not original you're gonna have so many excuses so many reasons and so many voices saying uh, uh, this is not uh, viable and and you'll believe it too like you're programmed to sort of stay in the comfort zone and go back to uh, drawing a pretty face or uh, a rendering of a mountain uh, but I think I think in that moment let's say you pick up your pencil and in, you have this cool idea and you start drawing the ideas uh, almost sit there and I, and I did talk about this before but uh, like since you're gonna expect that negativity and uh, self-doubt to come in almost like set a trap for it Be like okay cool I'm about to draw I can't wait to see what the self-doubt is going to say this time. Whenever it comes, write it down. Be like, okay, yeah, 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 okay, uh, <laughs> I got you now, right? So you start drawing, and then in comes the self-doubt, and then you have to address exactly where that's coming from. Like, let's say it is self-doubt, like this isn't going to work. Okay, why do I not think that? And then write all the reasons. Be like, okay, well, because it's not original. Um, maybe uh, I've never done this before. Uh, I don't have any any evidence from my own life to say that I'm good enough, right? Or like whatever the reasons are. Um, and oftentimes, actually all the time, it's something that's linked to your childhood. And so you have to dig back and like, okay, you started with self-doubt and then you do like a, a, a couple of uh, lines of writing and then eventually it's like two pages of words of you going back to when you were six, year, six years old when your older brother tell, told you something that you'll never make it or something, or something like that, right? Um, and so uh, for every single moment of, every single thought of self-doubt, every single, you know, sinking feeling of this is not going to work, this is never going to be good enough, this is never going to be like Craig Mullins or whatever it might be, you have to address it. And, and I, I could, you know, tell you the whole journey of what would work and, and like I did in the, in the first half of the conversation. Um, but if you don't address like your self-doubt by writing it and and addressing and strengthening yourself in those moments, then yeah, you you won't ever move on. And so part of it is like technical skill done. You got that, no big deal. The next part is research and coming up with a new idea. Cool, you can sort of do that. But the 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 part that's holding you back 
is imagine yourself like, you know, you're standing and uh, like on a field, right? And the goal is on the other side of the field, but you have a bunch of like uh, chains wrapped around your chest, right? And and they're just held back, right? And uh, the the point here is like now you have to look at those, look down at those chains, and then turn around and see what's pulling you, right? And in this case, it's like it might have been your uncle who said this thing about blah blah blah, blah. or you saw a, a video that said, yeah, don't try art, yeah, art's never going to work. Go to engineering, whatever whatever it is. And the reason I say it's wrapped around your chest is because when you feel self doubt. Like you, you get this cringe feeling in your in your sternum, and like you kind of tighten up there, and you're like, yeah, and it's kind of this nervous anxiety thing. And so, um, the only way to overcome it is to literally write down every single thing that happens. And and the beautiful thing is, once you write it, the next day your brain sort of rearranges itself after you sleep, and that thing is gone. It's like undoing the chain and like or cutting it with a wire cutter or whatever. And uh, you get to like take one more step forward in that field, and then you take two steps forward, and like, oh, I got some cool stuff, and then you start again. Oh, wait, there, there's that self doubt again, and you look down again, and you you turn around and find out that oh, yeah, that's because this time I saw this Reddit post that was making fun of an artist or blah 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 blah, whatever, you know. And so step by step, and I and that might take weeks, that might take months or years, whatever it takes, but you might as well do it now, right? And um, I promise you, because like my last four or five sketchbooks have been mostly words and me addressing those things. And let me tell you, it was depressing. It was frustrating. And it was, you know, like in the moment, it doesn't feel good because you're like, why can't I do this goddamn thing? Like, why is everyone else doing it? How come they can do it? How come they're making a million dollars on Patreon? Blah, blah, blah. I had my reasons for not doing any of this. Um, But little by little, I you know, took his step by step by step and uh, was able to unchain every single ball. And I still have a whole bunch of things holding me back from other things like, uh, uh, you know, and and in a sense, like other, you know, I've mentioned Jordan Peterson before, but he he kind of uh, uses the metaphor as a dragon. So it's like a dragon hoarding all the things that you want, but it's keeping you from getting them. Uh, because you let the dragon grow, and in this case, it's the the dragon of self doubt and anxiety, judgment, um, fears, and and so in this case, it's about addressing uh, your your life and your and your personal uh, experiences. Hmm. So I gotta stop lying to myself and just. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's like sometimes. When you look at other people and you and you want to help them, it's obvious to you. Like you could probably see your, you know, friends going through this and say, "Oh yeah, just do it, right?" But when you're in it, it's hard to see, and that's why we have each other for like uh, the blind spots and kind of um, seeing it from from a, a different perspective to to make a you know to to be like, "Hey, dude, I know what you're going through. Uh, I've been there, and I'm still there, actually. But here's how to here's how to move forward in that field." Robbie, I, I didn't ask for your, your input here. It's too loud. I'm just kidding, dude. All right, so yeah, anything else? No, I think it was pretty much, yeah. Uh, I need to think about it. <laughs> Yeah, man, like, coming from me, like, if you need that validation of, hey, you got the skills, I'm giving that to you right now, but I, I need to see uh, the story, I want to see you overcome these personal battles, and I want to see you get out there and succeed so that you can tell people how to do it as well. I do think, like, being a bit more open, like, with what I'm doing would help, like, streaming, like, doing content, stuff like that. That could help, too, I mean... uh yeah, what, what Neural just drew there, that's that's pretty good. Uh, that's that's a good metaphor. Uh, yeah, and so um, uh, streaming and sharing your stuff with, with people, uh, it, it's definitely helpful because you have the immediate feedback loop, and part of that helps you overcome your fear of judgment. And, and like, uh, a lot of times I'll post something thinking it's good, and, like, it's no feedback. I was like, oh, okay. So I, I sort of learned what works. But at the same time, um, other things that you learn from it is, uh, you know, it, maybe it doesn't matter what other people think. Maybe all that matters is 
uh, you have this idea, you're going to go to, and you're going to go on the journey anyway of, of doing your story and, and presenting this awesome portfolio that you wanted to do for you. And um, yeah, so that's, that's that. Yeah, I guess in the end, the only opinion that matters is your opinion about yourself. Sure, if, yeah. If you, if you kind of hate yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that's a big thing too. A lot of us are so hateful, not hateful, but hard on ourselves, right? And and it's crazy because when your friend is going through something, you sort of, you know, give them compassion. Be like, okay, stop beating yourself up, man. Like, you know, you're you're like, for example, fitness. Let's say your friend starts working out, but they have self doubt because they're not they didn't lose ten pounds in one day, right? You might look at them and say, oh, dude, stop beating yourself up. You know, you, you can uh, just keep going and, and you're, you're on the right track. Don't worry about it. Um, but when it's you in the position, like, you beat yourself up. Like, how come I'm not an awesome artist? How come I didn't draw this awesome thing right away uh, and all that stuff? And, and so uh, you have to stop being a tyrant to yourself and instead uh, treat yourself with the same kind of compassion that you would for your friend and sit and like look in the mirror or I know it sounds kind of cheesy but it's like all right cool yeah you suck Ahmed you know I'm looking at you in the mirror you suck right now on the at this thing but that's part of the process you have to suck at first um, but that's okay and, and all you got to do is you know do uh, you know one more pass at it and then one more and just keep going um, and and, and you can easily convince yourself to just stay in the comfort zone. And another, uh, I guess, uh, uh, visual metaphor that you can think of is like, uh, if you're at like a soccer game or football game, whatever you want to call it, depending on where you are in the world, um, you there's there's sitting on the sidelines and there's being on the field. Like a lot of us, we spend our whole life just sitting on the on the benches, looking down and watching all these people do the art. They they do the thing. They're 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 in the game. Right. And um, as we think about going to the field, we we have so many reasons to just stay sitting down and they're they're valid reasons. Fair enough. Like it's scary out there. I might get hurt. I might get offended. I might I might not succeed. And there's um, so many different uh, justifications for staying in the comfort zone. And it's and it's very nice in the comfort zone. Like you get food, you get you get to stay with your other friends who are doing nothing too. Um and it's like the moment you, you stand up, all your friends around you look at you and say, no, 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 don't go. Don't go. Stay with us. Stay with us. And they'll find reasons to keep you down too, right? But but then you start taking a step towards the sideline. Now you're one step closer to being on the field. And then you jump in the field. Oh, my God. And you're looking around. Everyone's running past you. You know, they're throwing the ball around. They're kicking the ball, uh, whatever. And um, and it's it's fast paced but it's exhilarating cuz you're on the field now too and you're vulnerable you can easily get hurt people will judge you but that's fine and so um yeah don't worry i'm recording all this uh and it's like you know uh it, it, when you're in the field it's like you're kind of alive you know and, and in that moment that's when you're um growing the most um and and you might even be in the field and you look back at the comfort zone and just see a lot of people just, you know, sinking into the seat and just, you know, letting their lives waste away. And you're just wondering, why don't you guys just get up? Or, you know, why don't you just join us here in the field? That's the kind of thing. And the, the reason is because we don't want to be hurt. We don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to be judged or compared to other artists or other, I don't know, footballers, whatever you, whatever you people call it. Um, so... Yeah, and the thing is, once you're out on the field, you also realize that we're out here too. We're out here to help each other and, and um, also make fun of each other. We're going to be mean and rude, of course, <laughs> especially against Robbie. Um, and so uh, that's kind of that's kind of uh, one way to think about it. So, yeah. Anything else? Uh, no, I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I'm curious to see where where that takes you, and would like to, um, yeah. Let me know how it goes. You know, come back in a week. Uh, well, I mean, or tomorrow, whatever. Uh, and, and let me know if you've you've uh, taken any steps forward. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No problem. Does anyone else have any no. questions? Uh, 
Uh, hey, Abby. Anyone else have any questions on this topic? A lot of questions, but like, just ask yourself, what is there to lose? Like, honestly, like, when you, like, let's say you stop yourself, I like, just ask yourself, why? Just what is there to lose? Like, what is there to gain from stopping? Mm. So on that note, yeah, go ahead. I would say there's nothing really to lose, like logically, if you rationalize it enough. Yeah. But there's like self-respect to lose, I guess. Like if I can't do something, I will respect myself less. And it's not really like a, I will not get the job or something. Like that. It's more of a sure, yeah. internal thing, fair enough, fair enough. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so to add to that, I think, um, you know, whenever you have a goal, uh, let's say in, in your case, an ideal dream scenario would be Naughty Dog or something. Um, you know, it's like there are, you can envision it in two ways. Like the dream is I'd be doing work that I love and that's going to be my motivation. But the thing is that might not be good enough. The other thing you have to envision is the opposite. What would happen if I don't even try this at all? What is What are the consequences of that? And the consequences are going to be, well, I'm still here on, on the chair, the, the bleachers on the sidelines, not doing anything. And so that could also act as your motivation. Um, but also it's like you, you mentioned that you, out of self-respect, you you know, you'll feel like you lose dignity or something if you don't succeed immediately or, or uh, at all whatsoever, if you're out on the field. Um, and, and so, you, you know, it's like you have to also embrace failure you know, because you can't go out there and expect uh, to always win. In fact, you, you, I would look forward to failure. Like get out there and be like, I can't wait to fail because what happens when you fail? You get to look at the failure and say, okay, well, let's look at the reasons why. And then you get to say, oh, okay, all right, well, I can do better here for sure next time. I don't understand this other part, but maybe I'll get there someday, right? So you have to have something to work with. Um, there's no such thing as jumping in and succeeding. I dropped out of a couple of colleges before I started. I was, dude, I was rock bottom, like miserable. Just, uh, you might see me on here. I got Patreon, Discord, YouTube. But before that, I was not in a good place. Like to the point where I just didn't see the point of doing art. I didn't know why I was doing what I was doing. Um, and so uh, what I'd say is uh, embrace the failures and say, okay, I'm actually excited to see the failures. And instead of feeling negative and beat myself up and, uh, lose respect for myself, I'm going to say, okay, awesome. I get to learn from this. I can't wait to do this again, you know? And then what happens is you, you have like positive emotion, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, gut, failure, yeah, yeah. And, and so it, positive emotion is one of the greatest motivators uh, and it moves you forward. And for example, like if you imagine yourself um, for, okay, so here's an example for me, um, getting to travel the world was one of the positive emotion uh, goals that I set for starting this whole thing. Um, and it actually got me excited. It might not happen, but it was just enough for me to uh, get everything going. And, um, and part of that was, you know, getting the hell away from where I live right now because there's just a miserable, I hate this apartment. I hate the little screaming kids outside. There's so many reasons to leave. And the idea of leaving that was exciting. Um, so positive emotion can take you a very long way, but also negative emotion, like for example, um, feeling the consequences of not doing it. That's, that's also, you know, um, something that you can use to your advantage. So, yeah. So what did I miss? Oh, hey. Uh, so angry sausage asked a question and I, I'm recording the whole thing. So I'll, I'll post it later on, okay. on YouTube, but, um, that is uh that that's what i yeah wait so if i say something i'll be featured in the video wait so if i say something i'll be featured in the video wait so if i say something i'll be featured in the video i'll be cutting that out right there no <laughs> <laughs> well uh. yeah how you feeling yeah i think i'm good but good. actually another thing um do you think they're like different levels of failure, at least on a personal level, because when it comes to getting better at art, uh, you realize that failure is part of getting better, right? Yeah. 
but then there's like another level where you like one step forward like getting a job right so you mm -hmm. fail at that and there's quite a difference between failure yeah as like a study thing and then failure as like as something a bit more yes sure impactful. sure yeah and there's i guess different degrees of yeah the emotions you feel especially because yeah. failing at a drawing like okay well i can see the failure here i didn't do the contour right fine um yeah it's 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 something within your understanding but let's say the failure of um of uh what's it called uh not getting a job and getting a rejection letter you know that's that's devastating you know a lot of my friends here who are in my class um they want to work at riot and uh, actually this one girl she applied and got a rejection letter saying hey uh, this is not uh, up to what we're kind of uh, looking for and all that kind of stuff uh, but she's like okay um, what can I do better right and so it, it's, it hurts to, to see that but also um, making the connection right there and saying okay well uh, can you at least point me in the right direction of what's not working uh, maybe they won't respond maybe hey. they will hey Leo uh, we're just kind of talking about something real quick. And then, okay. um, and so I think, uh, although it's a higher, more impactful uh, negative emotion, it's still uh, something that you can look at and say, um, there's still something to learn here. Maybe I don't know it. And, it, and, and maybe it's like a, an even greater degree of uh, negative emotion of uh, failure in, in terms of like rejection from another person. This person doesn't want to be my friend or this this girl rejected me. There's always something that you can take a step back. Uh, hey, Leo, can you can you uh, mute your mic? The micro uh, the keyboard's kind of loud. Um, thank you. And so uh, like uh, you can t always take a step back and look at the situation as if you're someone else so that you can it's like third person view right and say okay well this is why that happened and it hurts for me to address it because it hurts my ego hurts my feelings and negative emotion um but but it's the only way to move forward it's the only way to leave the bleachers it's the only way to st get on the field and to stay on the field so yeah does that make sense <laughs> no, it's like once you get slapped in the face with uh, these uh, th this kind of demand for responsibility on your own life, because everything you have in your life, everything that's happening to you is because of you. So once you realize that, then you're like, oh, crap, I'm in control of my destiny. God damn it. And so, uh, so I'm the problem. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No one wants to hear that, but it's the truth. And so that means you have to kind of get in, you know, take a step back and, and address the things in your own life to uh, continually improve, so, yeah. It's like um, how, how I feel right now, it's like, oh shit, now now I, I'm in control of my life, I, I need to take this seriously, it's like. Yeah, yeah, and, and Aklis, you're like 16, so you're at a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, how, old, Just... how old are you Just... in Greece's age? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, that's me too. I'm gonna be 21 in like two days. All right, you're. you're... Oh, that's fine. 21. Yeah. 21. But if <sighs> Daniela, you are a liar. <laughs> um, and so, even if you're 30, 40, doesn't matter. You can still address these things. It's never too late. The worst thing possible is if you let it go uh, and not address this, and suddenly you're 50 or 60, and you have nothing but regret because you know that you could have started. Um, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And so you might as well do it now. And you'll thank yourself later, trust me. I agree with Ahmed. <laughs> Thanks, Leo. Um, yeah. and, and so, yeah. <laughs> Robbie, you're a lost cause just in general. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> your parents you didn't you want you when you were able born. able to turn your life around if you stop playing May. Yeah, can't believe you're uh, me. I have a question on the yes. subject of art and moving forward. Yeah. What if you just feel kind of burnt out, like you don't really know why you're doing this anymore? Kind of uh, again, I think that goes back to writing what your goals are. Um, and I think, you know, whatever is making you feel burnt out and like you're kind of just like looking around and saying, oh, I feel like I've made zero progress. 
I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, other people are succeeding. They're doing the right thing. It seems like I'm not. By the way, you never feel like you're doing the right thing. Like imposter syndrome is real. I still feel like. Go ahead. Yeah, talking about you never know what you're doing. I've seen like uh, Will Terrell, if it's his name, I don't remember. Yeah. He, he did a video when he was working at... Um, WB? Uh, yeah, he said like, even in the studio, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, you're hesitating all the time. Yeah, yeah, and it's a great video. I actually just had lunch with him, and he gave me a tour of WB. Very oh, nice guy, very nice that guy. That guy is awesome. Yeah, and, and so definitely watch his stuff. But... um to further that it's like it's something I talked about recently the moment you realize like when you start working the moment you look around and realize that actually nobody knows what they're doing then you're sort of free from it because nobody does it's like everyone's kind of guessing and kind of trying different things and I'm sure there's a couple people who uh, got a good grip but really it's like we're all just we all want to have lunch and like we all want to uh, go home and sleep uh, we're and, humans yeah, everyone's a human. We're not Koreans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really good. So, like, um, Amit, I, I got a question. Yeah. So, like, um, have you ever had this feeling, like, you, like, you, you wanted to 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 draw something that made you happy, but you you are not good enough, and then you you just feel bad about yourself. Right. And, and how do you deal with it? And that's again a perfect moment to say. You have a choice. Let's say you tried to do this drawing and you, it didn't look at all what you want it to look like. Um, it's not even close. It's garbage. It's like, you know, bottom tier deviant art status, you know. And so uh, that's a perfect moment to step back and say, OK, I have a choice. I can either feel bad about it and and like uh, be depressed and beat myself up. Um, <laughs> then, yeah. Or you take, or the other choice is to say, okay, yeah, yeah, I know this sucks, but what sucks about it? Analyze it and say, well, what if I just worked on this thing so that next time, it's slightly better. Even that slightly better is is going to make a difference. And and you play Overwatch, so it's like that. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you keep running into Junkrat's bombs every time, uh, and you don't know why you keep dying. Maybe the next time you just step to the side. Right and avoid that bomb, um, and so you learn slowly. There's no such thing as oh one one day I'm going to learn absolutely everything, and it, I'm going to be done and ready. Um, and so uh, my my answer to that is um, embrace those moments when you have crappy, horrible drawings because mm-hmm. you're going to be able to look back at that um, a week later after you drew it over and over again and say oh look there there actually is progress you know might not be uh the best of the best obviously because you're starting out <sighs> damn it leo and um uh but but uh at least you get to um analyze it and say all right look there's empirical data this is this is science here you can look at the progress and say i can uh uh you know say that there's physical evidence to say that this this works so yeah Thanks, dude. yeah for sure <laughs> why the eggplant as <laughs> shut up robbie <laughs> yeah he has more subs than me uh yeah any any questions uh on this topic or anything similar um i have a question yep um well i want to draw a certain way but when i post it nobody likes that kind of content so i go back to drawing like anime which is not what i want to do anymore and i don't know what to do yeah yeah that's a that's a good question because i was definitely stuck in that too if you go to my instagram a lot of it is like okay what do I do to get more likes? And it's, you know, render, pretty girl face, whatever. Um, but then it's like you yourself also have to take a step back and establish your goals. If your goals are likes and follows, cool. Do the anime stuff. Get get the Do the fan art. Do, do a bunch of, uh, you know, character ships, matchups, whatever. People love that. Sure, fine. But if your goal is to explore what you actually like and what you enjoy then you have to take 
the approval of the audience out of the equation. You know, you can't you can't let their uh, uh, double taps uh, dictate what it is that you do. Um, Show them your soul. Yeah, exactly. It's like you have to uh, allow yourself to take a step back and say, you know, I do enjoy likes, I do enjoy followers, and I do like the fact of getting validation. Fine, that's human. We all do that. Uh, but what would happen if uh, that isn't my goal? Maybe my goal instead is to get better at this one thing so that I can tell this one story that would apply to this one uh, visual aesthetic, right? So in this case, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter what people think, um, but you yourself have to make that decision. Does that answer your question? Can yeah, I say something it's... about it? Yeah. Mm. I have some uh, a friend, I have shared his, his Instagram before. Uh, he always did what he wanted because he's no, he's not a, I think he wants to be a professional, but he's like 30 years old. He kind of has already a life, but he does uh, amazing things and he didn't have a lot of subscribers for a long time because he didn't do anime or stuff. He did something really personal. And one day a famous artist noticed him and he shared his art and some people really liked it. So I think it says something that maybe if you stop doing anime, you lose all your anime followers, but more can come, which are in more interesting on what mm. is personal to you. I've always posted mostly personal stuff on Instagram, and I've noticed that there is no equation for any success. I mean, even if I post a pretty girl, I won't get as much likes as if I did something else because sometimes mm. I, uh, I I did a Spider Gwen uh, fan art and it's like one of the uh, pictures I posted that has the most likes and she's not even in sexy poses or anything it's just like uh, crazy poses I tried with it, it was more a tra more like a training than anything I wouldn't have expected it to get that much like so I don't know there's no equation Sure, I'd also add to that, like when you, let's say, stop doing what is what you think will be popular and instead just do what you like, um, which might end up being anime. Like, I don't know, maybe that is what you want to do. That's fine. Um, but uh, let's say you don't do that and you just do the thing that you really love, um, but you you're consistent with it and, you know, you're enjoying it. That's going to resonate with at least somebody out there. And then you want you want more people like that following you. You don't want the whole masses. You want the people who love you for you. Um, and so one example I can kind of talk about, do you guys know Sarah Anderson comics on, on Instagram? No, let I'm sorry. Let me post it. Um, absolutely hilarious. It, I, I love her stuff, but the thing is she doesn't do anime. She doesn't do, um, you know, fancy, you know, Photoshop renders. She just does these silly little goofy, dumb comics. And oh, I've I, seen that before. Yeah, and, and she went from uh, like a few thousand followers to two million, right? Because she was doing what what was, uh, you know, true to her, right? Like, imagine if she started that and noticed that you know only only ten followers, or only a thousand followers, which you know. It might be a lot for some people, but when you're in it, it's like, ah, but there's someone else who has this many. Uh, imagine if she was like, okay, well, I'm going to stop doing what I love, and instead I'm going to do an, an anime fan art of, of uh, I don't know, whatever, right? Um, and then it's like she does that instead. Like she'll feel miserable. It's like, it's like suffocating who you want to be uh, for the sake of likes. And you can do it, sure, fine, like fair enough, but... Um, it's like it's like it's 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 a different kind of suffering. So you have to choose your suffering. You either suffer by doing what you don't love for real, or you suffer by uh, doing what you love and not get that easy, immediate uh, validation and, and likes and follows. The thing with audiences, um, fans, I guess, is that they are much slower than the artists themselves. So it takes a lot of time for people to accept change. I guess. Yeah. It's yeah. Your, it's human nature to like dislike things that are changing. Yeah. So if you start posting stuff you actually love, I guess people will grow to like it with you. 
Yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's not going to happen like instantly. Right. Yeah. And, and another example is like, um, you know, you start doing something and and like you get a couple of people who like love it and they re it resonates with them because it's authentic to you. They're going to sense that. And as you mentioned, like maybe someday uh, somebody with a lot of followers will notice and also understand because they went through the same thing and say, hey, check this out. Um, it's they do these silly, funny comics that, you know, for example, the Sarah Anderson stuff um, and, uh, you know, check it out. And then like some other people see it. And then then it's like the bandwagon effect where it's like when more people see it, there's more uh, credibility and ethos there. Um, or was it? Uh, snowball effect. Yeah, it's a snowball effect. So, you know, if, if your goal is to um, have a bunch of followers quicker, yeah, it, I'd say, you know, keep doing the fan art stuff and um, all that. It works. And it's like, I have nothing against fan art. I, you know, if, if it truly speaks to you and that's authentically what you want to do, that will also resonate with people. Me personally, I can't, I can't honestly say that that's what I want to do uh, right now, um, and so I would be lying if I was doing that. Um, I mean, I, I, I do have some things that I want to try, but uh, yeah, I think because it's like the other day, and not the other day, like a couple years ago, I was bitter about fan art. I had I had this opinion of like, yeah, fan art is a cheat. It's a crutch. I can it's like what people do when they have no originality. And I had all of these justifications to hate people like Sakimi-chan. And I was so resentful and bitter like an idiot, right? Um, then I was just, you know, a couple of days passed. And I was scrolling on Instagram. And someone did this very goofy drawing of Mega Man. Not goofy. It was good. I was like, oh, I love Mega Man. And I liked it. And then it hit me. I'm like, ah, oh, oh, of course. All right. I get it now. I loved Mega Man, and I was a fan. They did some fan art of it, and I connected with it. And so, uh, I, it, the only thing is like, um, you know, anime fan art. It's like familiar, right? And it's like you as an artist. Let's let's say there's a there's a uh, like you're on an island, and there's an, another island of people. Um, if you're on this island by yourself and you do your own personal work that nobody's familiar with, uh, it's not really an easy bridge. But doing like holding up a big picture of Mega Man in my case, it makes an immediate bridge from their island to mine, right? And so I keep doing that. I'll do Sailor Moon next, and I'll do um, Near Automata next, and, and and whatever. And so they're familiar with it, so it keeps strengthening that bridge. But um, at the same time. It's also a challenge uh, to do it the other way, which is uh, do your own thing. And then maybe one person on the other island looks over in their peripheral and be like, hey, that's kind of cool. And then uh, maybe I'll hop over there and they kind of do a rowboat. They kind of uh, swim over. Um, they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Hey, guys, check this out. And then they, they do make a bridge out of rope. And then eventually that bridge becomes uh, wood and then stone. And then, then it becomes a huge uh, highway tunnel. Uh, so it's like it, it takes a long time. But either way works. So hmm. I, I felt this way when I was uh, selling at Comic-Con. Because I only showed my personal stuff and hmm. almost no fan art. And even the fan art I do doesn't feel like, oh, I'm going to do something like Sakimichan. Hmm. So people... Like some people noticed that it was like, for example, Killzone or Destiny, but mm. it, it, there was no title or anything mm. to say it was. And my friend, which was uh, on my left, did a, tons of fan art, and yeah. people immediately went to his uh, portfolio and was like, "Oh, that's a cool Wonder Woman, dude!" Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, you can check my stuff too." <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like. Um, because I, I I sat in over at uh, what was it? Not WonderCon. It was uh, Long Beach Comic Con. It was a smaller Comic Con. Uh, my friend was putting up her work, and uh, I I kind of stopped by, and she let me kind of sit there in the back uh, behind the the table there, and I kind of just sat there and watched what people were responding to. And she had a bunch of work up, but the one that got the most attention was this picture of Princess Leia kind of flicking off the the. I don't know, the viewer, the camera, everybody loved it. Everyone wanted a print, everyone wanted a copy. And there was like other stuff that was good, but um, again, it's like I don't have anything against that and I don't have anything against Sakimi-chan. Uh, it's like, if anything, I admire her ability to um, 
engage and, and do that much uh, fan art because you can't, if that wasn't authentic to what she actually wanted to do, she would have stopped by now. But she enjoys it, and that's amazing. I wish I enjoyed it because that's definitely a very lucrative thing. But for me, as like a arrogant, prideful idiot, I, I can only uh, do my own thing. And so, uh, at I least feel the same. at least for now, um, yeah. So that's I, my yeah. Like even right now, I'm trying to do fun art of Star Wars, but I of can't what? even decide what of what Star Wars. Oh, the okay. New one. Yeah. Like, and I I can't decide myself if. I really want to do that. Like, yeah, I kind of want want to work on personal projects, but I also really enjoy the trailers and the new Battlefront. So I want to do fan art, but mm. I'm not sure if it's the right thing. And that's what you were talking about. Right. I mean, I technically, uh, by the way, th there are some legal things with fan art as well. If you're selling it, technically it is illegal because it's not your property. It's not your intellectual property. Um, uh, but but a lot of people, a lot of companies um, are not going to go out of their way because if anything, you're doing free marketing for them. You're spreading the word of their content. But then there's some companies, I've heard of things uh, where Disney will come in and say, you, yeah, you can't sell this picture of Princess, uh, I don't know. Uh, Leia. No, well, yeah, I guess she's Disney now too. But you, you know what I mean? Um, like uh, from Frozen or something. Like this has you have to stop selling this. Here's a cease and desist. If you don't stop, then we're coming after you with lawyers. But um, you know, some people uh, tread on those grounds, and you know, like Overwatch, they love fan art. They're, they're going to let you keep doing it. I don't know if I don't know if they're going to take action to prevent you from selling prints or T-shirts. Maybe they probably will. Um, but they're not going to go to Comic Con and come and police you, right? And if they do, it's you like loyalty the low. Yeah, right. Jasmine or GTF, <laughs> Robbie. All right. Yeah, same thing, Anna. Uh, yeah. Question, yes. A question that comes to my mind. Um, obviously, for me, this is all sort of hobby, but I've, I've grown to love it more because I've been able to do it more. Uh, yeah. Thanks to you, as usual. Uh -huh. um, there's, I think there's a bit of a sadness behind is my the feeling I get is if everyone in this Discord knew that they can never get an art job or a career in what they love doing, would they still love doing it and would they still create as they are now? Mm, that's a that's a good question. Um, and, and to further that question, uh, to really test your passion for art, is um, let's say this is. Uh, some something happened in the world and it's a big nuclear ap apocalypse and you're the only one left would you still do art you know yeah and I, and I totally would i think it's like i would still want to draw and, and kind of look take in my surroundings and observe and draw and, and hunt and hunt yeah and so uh but if if your answer is no then maybe that's not maybe this isn't the 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 right um career path for you so because it's like you you might not get paid as much as other people uh, you might not be as successful but if you love it you you're not going to care like comic book artists know they're getting paid less than let's say someone who's working in the movies doing the same kind of work but comic book artists love doing it and like yeah i, I know i could get paid more but this is my thing i don't care and i love life because i get to do what i want it's like yeah it's like that thing that don't sell yourself sure or don't sell yourself that right you, you sacrifice everything you enjoy about the very thing you do where you start despising it because the people at work or your boss you know expects you to do something else that you can actually like doing right it's, you sort of kill what you used to love about art like when you're eight when you're 12 mm. it's art you love creating your imagination yes yeah, it's, it's crazy yeah um, it's tough out there but Totally. That, that's such an interesting thing that you mentioned because uh, I forgot where I saw it. Probably Jordan Peterson video. But um, the wise person is the the person who uh, you know left their childhood innocence and and became an adult, but also was able to return to their childhood innocence, but this time with wisdom, right? And so uh, a great I guess uh, 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 example of that is the movie Hook. The, the Peter Pan movie and so it's Robin Williams as Peter Pan but it shows oh you should totally watch it um, so the story is like 
Peter Pan was uh, a boy, and then then we see him as an adult. But as an adult, he forgot completely that he was even Peter Pan and flying around and fighting pirates, um, and it all kind of. And he became a serious lawyer, and he was kind of angry all the time, yelling at his kids. And then something happened where he had to go back to Neverland, but he couldn't fly. He couldn't do anything because he lost his childhood innocence. So the the story was like, um, how do you get yourself to return to your childhood innocence so that you can uh, save your children? In this case, his children uh, were kidnapped. And so he found his happy thought, blah, 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 blah. And he was kind of excited about life again. And he started flying, right? And that's a perfect metaphor of um, us right now. Uh, well, actually, not all of us. Cause some of you are, you know, much younger. But um, we've lost that joy that we had when we're just grabbing crayons and drawing and enjoying it. Um, and then so uh, that's where I am right now, by the way. I'm at the, I guess, uh, point where I have to pivot back and, and uh, enjoy it again and and. I can tell you the past three, four, maybe seven years, I've not enjoyed art at all because, you know, I I got super serious about it. And and, uh, sure, I benefited. I got the wisdom and knowledge, the technical skills. I've worked at studios here and there. Uh, I went to ArenaNet and I left. And it's like. But you you lost something. Yes, I lost that childhood uh, sense of wonder and curiosity and enjoyment of just putting that pencil to paper. Mm -hmm. And so I'm day after day finding that again. Uh, especially with the help of you guys here on Discord. We're having a good time on here. Because um, we're young. Yeah, sure, you're right. Uh, and I think the next part for me is to leave California so I can uh, be stimulated by not the same goddamn walls over and over again. And and so, yeah. That's that sense of wonder, that daydream, where you you get to like kind of sit there and like imagine the story. You imagine the world. It, it's, it's fantasy. It's sci-fi. It's whatever it might be. Um, and then you go to draw it, but it doesn't look like it. And so yeah. that's where you have to, you know, become the adult responsible part where you learn the technical skills and then all the while try to not forget that initial daydream and then eventually come back to it and say, okay, I'm ready to fight this dragon again, but this time I know how to draw. I can do perspective now. I can do cinematic uh, uh, compositions. And then, then you show us your story, that kind of thing. So, yeah, exactly. yeah. Comics, by the way, are a great way to do that because yeah, but I always stop that. I always stop at the third page because it takes me a lot of time, and I'm like, yeah, but I should I should change this. I I never agree with myself. <laughs> That's the problem. I should like do the Jake Parker thing, finished but not perfect. Yes, yes. And so for you, that that's your challenge. It's like maybe you just do three pages. Uh, but what if you tried it again and say, okay, let's do the whole thing, but but bad on purpose. But at least you have something finished to say, okay, well, now I have something complete and I can see the whole story here, right? So um, maybe a storyboard will be yeah, be... very loose, very. And the thing is with graphic novels and comics, they're starting to. Uh, you see a lot of movies and and uh, shows coming from that, like Walking Dead, Avengers, all this stuff. Um, or John Wick. Right. And so uh, you can, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, a lot of um, directors and studios will look at those instead of uh, actual uh, scripts. So it's like, because the whole story is there, the visuals are there, and, and it's really all you need. So you never know what might happen. Yeah, there's even some shots that are exactly the same in the storyboard as in the final movie. I have a lot of uh, storyboard books and concept art uh, art book in my in my room, and for example, I mostly have Star Wars art books, I guess, <laughs> and yeah. this I have the Star Wars storyboards, and I could totally see this as a comic book hmm. because, like, there is frames and scripts, yeah. but it's also very cinematographic and one day I showed actually one of my comic books to a professional and he said there's way too much strip like to tell one scene you do so many shots don't do that I'm like I want to do it like a movie don't tell me what to do (laughs) (laughs) well I mean less is more sometimes Um, but the thing about the Star Wars like yeah if you look at the, the storyboards especially the ones by Ian McKaig it tells the whole story. It's beautiful. Um, I only have the ones from uh, Joe Johnston and stuff for, from the original trilogy. I'm still okay, waiting right. to get the ones from the trilogy. Definitely check them out. Ian McKaig. Uh, also, 
if you can watch his uh, Noman DVDs about storytelling. It's it's quite an eye opener, and and it really. How, how much do they cost? I don't know. Google it. You might find stuff. How do you write that? You can just w- also watch him publicly speak. That guy is yeah. inspirational. Yeah, I, I've I remember, watched some of the videos. Of I remember him. actually what he once told a group, like for the seminar I went to for the Omen thing. He told us uh, when the hero Erwin goes to face the dragon, do they go in scared? Because the guy, one yeah. guy asked him about how do you face your fear of actually putting your art, art out there, actually? And he. He says they go in scared and they go in all the time. They know yeah. That. Wait, which workshop did you go to? The one in San Francisco? It was, no, no, no. It was Noman. They had it a oh. while back, if I remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was at the San Francisco one. I, it would have been funny if you were both there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But no, it was an exhibit at Noman, I think. He was like doing a little demo. Right on. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, on that note, I do have to get back to drawing uh, something and, and get that stuff done. Um, Okay. Yeah, it was definitely a pleasure talking about this stuff. Yeah. Let me stop. The it was really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad, glad you asked that, Mister Angry Sausage. <laughs> sure. I should change my name. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, it's a great name. It's a great name. <laughs> Wait, by the way, uh, where are you from? Oh, um, I'm from Moldova. It's near Romania. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, Anna's from Romania. You guys can go I hang out. Up. <laughs> All right, stop recording.